Okay, so we're now um, live with this. The virtual re reveal is something that we've been uh, doing for many years. It started um, once we started the Illustrator contest, and that's uh, probably about 30 years ago. And in so doing, one of the big things was the fact that um, writers, obviously for the first time, or mostly for the first time, this is uh, when they're um, big published uh, in the Rise of the Future, but to have their story illustrated is something that they weren't used to. So when we started putting the uh, art up and then we came up with an idea, let's do a big reveal so that the artists all stood around the side and then the writers were led into the room and then they had to pick the illustration themselves because obviously an illustration tells a story and it's supposed to be some part of the story that you wrote. So it turned out to be one of the most emotional events within that whole week of the workshop. So um, it's grown on, gone on for 30 plus years. So now we're doing it for the first time because of the, uh, the current uh, quarantine situation globally, we're doing this an online big reveal event. And we're very excited to see how this goes. So the way um, we're gonna do it now is I'm gonna be turning over shortly to Emily as a uh, co-host. All right. So uh, you should be able to see then a copy of your new book and the uh, incredible art created by uh, Echo Chernick, correct? Yep. Yes. Okay, great. Yes. So um, yes. now the yeah, idea is see. that the way it's set up is that when you speak, then your face will be highlighted so people can see who it is. So what you see there now is all 12 pieces of art. And this is done in the sequence of the book. That's, that's what we're doing it in is the book sequence. There's no other significance in that. Okay, so here's the first one now. It's amazing. Whoever this is, it's amazing. Okay, so now we've gone through the 12 pieces of art. So we wanna have the writer and the illustrator be able to chat for a little bit and you'll be able to discuss, you know, what you, you, know, what you thought best about this story, what's really interesting about this story and how do you do that with the illustration? Just a little, little uh, discussion and then we'll move on to the second piece of art. So here we go with the first piece of art. Is that for the trade? Let's get the illustrator to come up and... Uh, well, I mean, uh, yeah, this is uh, my piece that I worked on for the trade. <laughs> so um, it was a really, really interesting, interesting story to read and quite a, a challenging one for me to, um, to paint because I'm sort of used to painting like more like action-y kind of sequences. So trying to paint something that was a little bit more... Um, paint the scene so far that was just characters communicating and trying to work out like this big deal, this big struggle was a really interesting challenge. And of course, the main character for me, Daigo, I think was his, was his name, really, really stole the show. So I had to incorporate that, you know, the alien character somehow into, into the piece. He was a really fun character to work with. Even though I didn't get much on his physical description, sadly. <laughs> yeah, you did a great job, Arthur. And yeah, I intentionally um, didn't describe him to kind of accentuate his alienness and so the reader or in this case the illustrator could interpret his i guess physical features a little bit based on what came to mind um so without any uh prompting you've done a great job of giving this kind of this figure this sort of alluring almost like tempting you face yeah. just holding something out it's perfect it's perfect for the story and the character you First time it. painting a salesman. <laughs> so. That's it. That's what he is. Good. So there we go. That was uh, written by, by Chris Winspear and illustrated by Arthur Bowling. It's amazing. All right. So this is going good so far. So next next piece of art. I was thinking that might have been mine, Foundations. Does the illustrator uh, want to say something? Yeah, that, um, I drew that. Yes. Hello. My name is Hi, Andy. how are you? I illustrated that. I am 
I'm I'm doing great. This was very interesting to to draw. Um, I had to, I had quite a few different ideas of where to go with it, but I decided to stick with more of like a traditional family tree style uh, drawing, uh, just because like family ties and foundations are so fundamental to the the story. You can see the big house there with the one of the plot points is where it kind of collapses a little bit, so I decided to put that in there as well. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I really love it. It's. Uh, I kept trying to imagine what you'd uh, pick out of this, and I must admit, it, this was not what I was thinking. Um, but at the same time, as soon as I saw it, I went, "Yeah, that's nailed it." Um, and I'm glad you picked up sort of the the family element. I mean, that was the key bit for me that what it was all all about. So, like, you've made that really prominent in there. And I must admit, I didn't see until sort of the second go around the collapsed house, which really stood out. But yeah, I, I think it's great. That's great. Yeah, I, I wanted to pick out like little little bits from the stories. Like you can see the the car from the yeah. I can't remember his name, but the like the engineer. Yeah, I even noticed yeah. the white car as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, great. Thank you. This is me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, a word that means everything. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for drawing the aliens. I that was probably the most exciting part for me was the the other world and the creatures that lived in it, um, and that's kind of why I picked like almost a landscape where you, they kind of first meet that uh, really rude alien at the beginning. Um, so yeah, that's I wanted to do the I wanted to get that atmosphere across of the strange creatures and the misty sort of environment they were in and um i also liked that since their communication is um it's visual not audio so Tentacles. it was something you could show in the <laughs> illustration yeah it was it's visual communication so it could be in a in an image so yeah that's why i did it the way i did it that's great okay so next Oh, so yeah, I think this is for my story, Catching My Death. You got it. It was really fun to try and cat, try and um, have the eerie atmosphere of it and to see how creepy like the monsters were and everything. It was a really cool story. Well, thank you. I think, yeah, I was kind of sort of hoping this was the thing you would choose to do I think because it's the most obviously visual one and I just love kind of the mistiness of the forest that you've got there and kind of the the soft lines it's it's beautiful and yeah it really just kind of captures that idea of it as a sort of spooky liminal space where you're almost kind of stepping into death so yeah it's absolutely beautiful thank you that's great okay next I think this must be mine. Yep. Yep. Three kids and a dog would would be um, the main characters at the beginning of the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I illustrated this and uh, pretty interesting and unique. I uh, found it pretty unexpected, and I kind of love that about it. So I wanted to do something unique and unexpected and yeah the, I really love their uh, their bond like that was the this entire thing for me was how close they were is like uh, siblings doubt for each other okay great I believe this one is mine and I am super happy about it <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, I'm the illustrator. Wow. <laughs> this is... This is so cool. This is like the perfect scene that you could have chosen for this story. And it's absolutely gorgeous. I love... Thank you. ...your art style. I love... I love literally everything about it. And like, pardon me, I'm gonna die now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's like my quota of emoting for the month. Sorry, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. 
So that's a definite pass there, Air Mac. <laughs> <That'd be laughs> yeah. <good>. um, <laughs> okay, this one is definitely mine for educational tapes. Yeah. Uh, is the person who did it here? Yes. I, okay. Yeah. Uh, this is sick. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I really Thank love you. your Thank interpretation you of like the guy in the suit. I forget what I called him in the story, <laughs> but yeah. Did you? Yeah, have I I, um, I couldn't oh, help sorry. myself with the colors on this one. Yeah, the it red was, is really it was striking. really really hard to like um, like because there's no like main character in the story, but. I, I knew that I had to make a, a, some sort of portraiture for this um, piece. Mm -hmm. So I, I took some artistic liberties to make some sort of like a uh, subject 10 something. I, I forgot the name of the character, but uh, yeah. And I think I tried like to fit as much of um, the something? story as I could. Yeah, no, you did a really hmm? good job, particularly because there's not, there's not a lot of description of like people and their faces. So I think you really did a good job at embodying the main character. And the birds. And the birds, yes. I oh, all the birds. Yes. Okay, good. Next. I'm thinking this must be Trading Ghosts. It is. <laughs> and Mason, who's uh, our artist from Iran, is he was so upset they couldn't be part of this. He wanted so, he wants so much to be uh, part of this whole group. And we have a, a video recorded from him that we're going to be playing. So as you know, my name is Mason Matak from Iran. And uh, I'm really, really happy that I'm able to talk to you two face to face. I want to thank from my writer, writer of my story, the author, I think. Uh, the story was really great. Thank you, mate. And uh, oh god, it's only problem for me that all of the angels in my country are the women, beautiful women. Uh, but in your story, the angel was a man. Oh god, and it was a really challenge for me to change it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. A lot of love, hugs, and kisses from Iran to all of you. Hope to see you soon. So I hope you love it there, David. I, I do. I really appreciate that he's really captured the melancholy that I wanted to try to inject into the story and all of the colors that are in the story as well on the planet that they're on. Yeah. So I, I like his interpretation. That's great. We'll make sure we'll let him know because he's going to see this on Facebook. He can actually watch it. But when we're done with this, we're uploading this. So we'll see it there too. Your comment. Thank okay. you, Mr. Matak. Good. And um, next. I think this is mine. Is this Stolen Sky? It is. <laughs> That's awesome. Do we have an illustrator? Hi, um, I'm Ann. I'm the illustrator for this piece. And um, when I first read this piece, I was overwhelmed with all the like magical and beautiful descriptions you gave for each sunset and characters. And so I was just very inspired to design the characters. And the scene that I was really drawn towards is when the serpent character sparked a memory from of the main characters back to her home planet and it kind of hit me with me because I'm originally from Vietnam and now I'm in the U.S. so um, it, I know what it's like to be kind of missing um, where you came from and so I just wanted to depict that and in addition with the moment in the end where she saw her sunset for the first time imitated and she was crying but she didn't she was very mixed feelings about it um almost kind of sad and you don't know if she's sad, sad or not from the story i i love what you picked to also how you uh interpreted sadiq who's the floating image there in the middle of the two characters i think you did a great job with her and also that the main character who's there in the foreground in the front yeah, I didn't describe her at all, and I, I think that you did a fantastic job uh, with that. But I, I couldn't have imagined a better thing for you to pick. 
to, to draw. So this is, this is fantastic. Thank you. Your story was, your story was really great. I loved it. Thank you. Glad you it. Excellent. Okay, good. Next. Yeah, so my eyes went straight to this one when I saw all 12 come up. And I, I think it's because the, the mood of it and also the look on the guy's face just screams my story, which was as, as able to air. So yes, it is. Um, I'm sure that's what that is. Yeah, I'm Brock. I was illustrated this one for as able to air. And uh, it is reading a little bit dark. I'm sure that might have been a problem on my part, but I think that's something we could figure out. But I loved this story. It was super, super um, like haunting. And one of the main aspects that I tried to capture about it was the air toe, the main character, his sort of starving for human connection being that his romantic interest was an AI and Dart, his drone interaction with through work was also an AI. And he, it, throughout the story, it felt like he was kind of suppressed in expressing who he was. And that was one of the things that really like sunk deep when I was reading it and wanted to express. And I loved the story. So thank you for letting me illustrate it. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you for illustrating. I mean, it, it's, I had that same thought that somebody else mentioned, which was, I, I kept thinking, what's he going to pick? How's he going to choose what to do with the story? But you got it all in there in a way that totally captures the, like the deflation, but also the loneliness and. Yeah. And well, also well, the whole things at night. And, that. Right. That was something I was going for, for sure. And I mean, that isolation is, I'm sure, something we're all feeling a little bit now during quarantine, which is just funny timing. Um, mm -hmm. but anyway, <laughs> yeah, this was a blast to, to illustrate. Okay. Your, your material was super informative, so I really appreciated it. Awesome. Okay. And uh, next. I think this is molting season. That's correct. Yeah, I mean, I loved uh, the just the way you're how descriptive you were. Um, it, it felt like um, a dystopian fever dream. I mean, with doing the research for this piece, I found myself in a weird internet rabbit hole about like spider cannibalism or some, something along the lines of that. So definitely I really enjoyed really enjoyed it uh the whole process great so this looks kind of like uh the dream he was having at the hotel and maybe the story she was telling him the the girl on the couch was telling him later on um but yeah it's essentially right. the, yeah. the, the alien race forming a uh, mainframe <laughs> uh, you kind of broke off at the end there, internet uh, connection, but um, yeah, it was part of the dream sequence. Um, I was, you know, wanted to be a little conceptual as far as like, you know, trying to get the, I don't know, the whole scope of like what was going on, but yeah, it was, it was taken from that, that, that scene. Great. I mean, it's awesome. I think it really encapsulates the mood of the story. Okay. Awesome. It's good to hear. All right, so let's go on now to the next story. Uh, this has to be mine, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I love the color in it. That's very, very beautiful. Um, Phoebe, I think that's amazing. Thank you. And I'm guessing that Thank must you. It be was such a fun story to read. Like, I'm a huge... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm like a huge theater nerd too. So it was so much fun to, uh, like your play on words and everything I had so much fun with. And I definitely wanted to capture that like mixture of like outwards performance and then like the dramatics backstage with all, it was, it was a really fun story. Yeah, I see you got the curtain in there and um, very, very cool. I like it a lot. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you for writing it. It was really fun. All right, so we've gone through now the 12 stories. You wanna, yeah. So now we've, we've gone through the 12 stories for the 12 winners. Now we also have the additional stories that were um, published, or that are published in this book. And 
We have Catherine Kurtz. So Catherine, are you able to say anything? Wait a minute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Ah, well, a button it just showed up on the screen and it said unmute the microphone. So progress. I've never done Zoom before, so you're going to have to bear with me. Okay, well, we can hear your, your dulcet voice and uh, <laughs> it's exciting because we have a, a story in, uh, in this volume here by Catherine, The Green Tower. John, do you want to say something about this? I, I, it was a really nice story to read. It was really fun to illustrate, too. I really liked um, kind of the, the setting was placed in. And uh, yeah. Thank you. OK, so I'm going to uh, make Brittany, who's on watching, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to promote her to panelist. So Brittany, can you say something? Hi, everyone. We have her as a, can anybody see you yet? Uh, no, my camera's down. Okay, good. So you were the grand prize winner for volume 24? Uh, yes, I believe so. It's, it's been a while. <laughs> so I can't remember the exact number at this point, but, uh, but I believe it was 2008. Yeah. And anything about this story that, because uh, this is written by Nadia Korafor, so uh, one of our judges, but she was also an earlier winner, also back in maybe even the same year you were around that time period, but the Winds of Harmattan? Uh, yes, the Winds of Harmattan, it's, um, it's a very interesting story. It, it basically follows a, um, a woman. She's basically one of the last of her kind. She's basically a wind spirit or a wind deity but uh, she's living in a world with regular people and um, you know, they mistake her for a witch when they, it's kind of like the people have lost touch with their own heritage and that uh, these creatures, well not creatures, these people with these special gifts were um, a part of the people, they respected them. And as times changed, it's like that respect turned to fear. So it kind of follows her story and um, her trying to find another person that's like her um, to reconnect with, you know, with her own people. It was really fun to do. That's great. Well, thank you very much. Then this is, she's not, like I said, she's not here, but this is from Cassandra Boland, the illustration to the story Borrowed Glory by Owen Hubbard. It's also in the book. Okay, next slide. Okay, now we've got uh, another judge that's with us that I wanted to be able to uh, invite. That's Craig Elliott. I'm here in my studio packed with books and brushes. Oh, welcome everyone. It's so great to see all the artists and the artwork and the writers and wow. Good. Welcome and any everyone. thoughts you've got, because this is the first time we've done this online. Any other uh, particular thoughts? What you saw now, you oh, afterwards. Man, the level of work is just overwhelming. You guys have done amazing. Um, you know, in looking at all the art through the various judgings, I, I just continue to be impressed. Um, makes it hard to decide, actually. Makes my job harder <laughs> when you guys are this good. <laughs> um, you know, and, you know, I have, I love that there's so many different styles too. Um, that's, you know, it's so great to see a wide range of things happening and, and people exploring new directions and um, it's just, it's just wonderful. Thank you so much for putting all this all together too. Great. Thanks for joining us. Uh, oh, Rob Pryor is saying hello and... What's my, up? <laughs> there. So Rob, so mm -hmm. this is Rob Pryor, one of our illustrator judges and amazing artist. So you want to say something, Rob? Uh, all of you guys to get this far and do everything you guys have done. That's amazing. And the fact that we can do this on zoom is a little crazy, but cool. Great. Thank you. <laughs> and then I'm going to get, uh, can, can, uh can, is there a way like you can wear a mask or just do something crazy? Should have done that. Who, me? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to go back to, uh, <laughs> Where yeah, we got Emily here. She's joined me on this thing here, but Ask? <laughs> when I'm not here in this virtual world where I am this is where I normally am right now. So Fantastic. Um, I'm enjoying this this time period now. So anyway, so thank you, Rob. And now I'm gonna then let 
Good. Yeah, I'm going to go through all of our judges, give them all an opportunity to say hello. So, and now I'm going to invite Dave Farland. I'm going to find him in here. I'm here. Planets in the background, all that good stuff. Okay, good. There and we it's go. Been great to see everybody. I've been looking forward to this, and uh, uh, I'm excited uh, excited to see all of you in August here. Okay, so we got Rob Sawyer joining in. The host has promoted me. Here I am. There you are. Hey. Does everybody see Rob? Yeah. Yes. With my Writers of the Future shirt, I'll have you know. <laughs> this is the whole big thing. Forget the prizes. Forget the publication. You're going to get the T-shirt. That's what it's all about. <laughs> so, Rob, Honestly, the interesting have... thing here is what you're seeing on this screen now, complete strangers to all of you, these are going to be your peeps, your cohort, your writing compadres for the rest of your career. You will bond so tightly when you come to California. That's really more than who walks away with the big checks, more than who, uh, you know, wins or, or doesn't as, as we go along in the, in the judging. The fact that you're going to have this community event is going to change your life incredibly. I envy you all because uh, there was nothing like this uh, get together when I first started. So you've got a few months to wait, enjoy the anticipation. It's going to be worth it. You're gonna have an amazing time. Congratulations to you all. Great, thank you, Rob. Hi, this is Kevin J. Anderson. I wanna say congratulations to all of the writers and illustrators of the future winners. I wish we could have been there for your great reveal this afternoon. That's always a magical time of the, uh, the week-long event. And I wish we could be there to be presenting you your awards in person, but it's times like these that writers have to use their imagination. Illustrators have to envision a different world and we can all be together and read some good stories and see some great artwork. We'll see you sometime soon, whenever we can. Hi everyone, this is Rebecca Mesta, congratulating you on your wins in writers and illustrators of the future. You'll still have to wait a little bit longer to hold those statues in your hands and have us be there celebrating with you in person. But meanwhile, we'll have to do this and congratulations, we're so proud of you. Hey, writers and illustrators of the future winners. Uh, this is Nina Kariki Hoffman. I just want to congratulate you on getting together, um, sharing the artwork and the stories, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in August. Hi folks, this is just a short message from Barcelona, Spain. I just want to say something to the winners, artists and writers. Congratulations. Hi everyone, Stephen Yule here, one of your judges. I just wanted to send a congratulations to everybody who got this far in the competition. All the finalists, to me, are all winners, even though we had to pick a winner, and that will be revealed in August. But uh, I think you've all got great futures ahead of yourself if you just keep a good work up and dig in and just put your heart behind whatever passions you've got. You'll go far in this world, just remember, you only get out what you put in. So congratulations again. You're all winners. But in August, the winner will be revealed. And until then, good luck. I'd like to take this moment to offer my appreciation to illustrator managing judge Echo Chernick for creating such a wonderful piece of art for the cover of this year's anthology. I feel privileged to have had the chance to write a story to accompany it. Okay, now I'm going to also bring back on um, Echo, because you've seen their art now, we've all like had our various, um, I mean, I've never had so many amazing comments about a cover. So are you back with us, Echo, now as a, as a panelist? So um, are you there with us, Echo? There we go, I see you. So if you can, um, a little bit about describing the art, because it's just amazing what you've done with this art, but the history of it and why, you know, you did it, what you did is, um, I think worth talking about. So first of all, the, the, the illustrations in the book look fabulous. You guys all did a wonderful job. It's great to see them all together. Uh, they just look great. Um, and it is, I'm so honored to be, to have been able to do the cover for you. Um, and I hope you like it. Uh, it 
the concept behind the cover is that I was pretty much, um, Maliva approached me and told me that I could do anything I wanted. They liked my winged women. They wanted me to do, you know, something that would inspire a story. Uh, so I wanted to do a piece that was, had a lot of hope in it. And, um, but that also represented all of you in the story. Like the, the, unexpe the unexpected egg is all about, you don't know what's in this second egg. And so it pairs to, you don't know what's in this book and it's just full of all these treasures and wonderful stories. Um, so hopefully that conveys well. It does very much so. So thank you very much for that. And I just realized too, we've got your husband, Lazarus. Okay, so Lazarus, are you with us? Great job on the illustrations. They are amazing. I'm really, really super excited to see the book. And uh, I'm really excited to meet you all, hopefully uh, in August, and uh, be able to get uh, information into you and some uh, inspiration from you. Because as was said earlier by another judge, the event where everyone gets together is really a mind-blowing experience to, to bond. I mean, some of you went to art school, some of you didn't. There's an experience you have when you're around other creatives who have the same passion as you. And... You know, you get uh, familiarity in a very close proximity with each other uh, and that energy starts bubbling and boiling. And then when you get to meet the writers at the same time, that you don't meet them all the time, but you get to hang out with them after, uh, after hours. And it's just a great experience to be a part of what becomes an industry because the judges are part of the writers, are part of the industry, the illustrators are part of the industry, it's all publishing and it's just, it becomes a family very quickly. And I'm really excited to meet you all. And again, great job on the art. And I can't wait to read the stories because I've only read uh, snippets that have been passed through. Great, well, thank you very much, Lazarus. And we're all, we're all looking forward to the end of August for our um, big event and the workshop. <laughs> all right, so this basically concludes our big reveal for the first time ever as a uh, online event. And um, I'm going to have Emily pull up one more. She can take over the screen again so she can pull up our final and maybe uh, most important message right now, which we want to get out because we're, our objective now is to uh, make a, a bestseller. So this uh, last message, get your copy today, is something we want to be able to share. This will be up on um, social media uh, relatively soon. And uh, it's all of our work together that's going to make this thing a national bestseller. Just realize it's it's um it's a new world right now with uh doing everything online we're going to hopefully be able to do some online events with bookstores or some of our friends in the various bookstores independence barnes and noble books a million if you have any bookstores that you're good friends with please uh, let us know and we'll set up a virtual event where you can be the guest speaker at the event with your bookstore so we can help sell the books um and then we'll just be cutting this up into various little um videos that you can share as well as um, this overall event itself. So thank you very much for attending and it's been an awesome time meeting you and uh, let's make ourselves a big bestseller and we'll have a great time in August when we come together. August. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you. Can't wait to see Thanks. everybody. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Bye-bye. And Emily's going to take you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Emily's quickly running in to say goodbye to. Bye, everybody. See you soon. You. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.